Hey, Tribe family, go ahead. You know what time it is. Take out your Bibles and turn to Mark chapter 16. We are finishing up the Gospel of Mark this morning. I am so thankful to be back in the office uh, for many of you. Um, You probably found out a couple weeks ago I had the pleasure of being in the presence of somebody who ended up tested positive for the virus, and they told me I had to quarantine for 14 days. So guess what? I'm back. Uh, We're so thankful. Everybody's fine. Everybody's cool. Everybody's good to go. Uh, So if you knew that, thanks for praying if you did. And if you didn't know that, now you know. Mark 16, uh, many of you may be watching this and you've already done your reading for today. But in our reading for today in Mark 16, we have come through a week of seeing Jesus's what they call the passion experience, where he went to the cross, where he was crucified for our sins, where the centurion who was, he was the one that actually in, throughout the gospel got it, that Jesus is the son of God. And he saw that and he realized that. And then you see that after his death, Jesus was buried and Jesus was laid in a borrowed tomb. Uh, and then as you as you read through these students, I hope that you took time to stop and pay attention to the people who were involved in this account in Mark. It's pretty important that you do that, all right? Because as you see their experience with Jesus and their experience with the crucifixion and their experience, even in what we're going to see today, the resurrection, you ask yourself the question, what led to their understanding of Jesus? What led to their reactions? What led to their responses? And then as you see that, you start to see some lessons that we can learn from. But here's the thing. The whole purpose of the gospel is not so that we learn from the people and the disciples. The whole purpose of the gospel is to realize like that centurion did. Jesus is the Son of God. He was perfect. And He was the Old Testament Lamb of God who came to take away our sins through His death, His burial. And resurrection. And so when you look here, this is going to be a couple minute long today, so I hope you have a little time. Uh, we see the resurrection in chapter 16, but if you read, you got to about verse 8, and some of the some of your Bibles, some of your translations will have a little section that's bracketed out. In mine, it says from verses 9, nine through 20, it says this little statement. Some of the earliest manuscripts, manuscripts being the copies of of the Bible that has been accumulated throughout history, actually copies of rolls and scrolls and books and papers and leaves of papers and old fragments of the parchments and stuff. What we found is that some of the earliest manuscripts we have of the Gospel of Mark, the earliest ones, don't have recorded verses 9 through 20. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't occur in later manuscripts that are very accurate all the way up to verse 9 in chapter 16. Then this section is, 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 it appears in history later than some of the earliest manuscripts. And so what I love about the translators is you need to understand the translators want you to know that when we're putting together translations of Scripture and they're putting together what they call the canon of Scripture, they want to show all the facts. All right. Now, some of you may be wondering this, but wait, I thought this was inspired and it's without error. It is. But what we're holding in our hand is a translation of the original autographs, what they call them. And that is what was inspired and perfect and without error. But I want you to know what you hold in your hand is a translation of that. And a lot of people who do a lot of scholarly work and a lot of research, they would attest, meaning they would say, yeah, what we hold in our hand is about 100%, about 100% accurate with what the original writings were. And some of the folks that would say that are even people who don't even, they're not even Christian. They just, they just know that you can't deny what we have in our hand. So I'm thankful for godly men and women who translate scripture from original languages and translate it to many different languages. But I want you to see that so it doesn't alarm you, because I will say this, students, there will be some people when you start to let them know that you believe that we have 
in our hands the very words of God, the very word of God as given to us in English language here. Uh, and they'll say, but what about something like the Gospel of Mark? Isn't there, isn't there some kind of controversy about the ending of chapter 16? You say, no, there's no controversy at all. Because what's crazy is 9 through 20, uh, it, it shows up later in the manuscript evidence. But is this, but it's there's some similarities and there's some truth that you'll see throughout the rest of the Gospels and into Acts uh, about some of the events that it's saying will happen to prove that that God is who he, that Jesus is who he said he is and the people of God are who they say he is. So I want you to understand we don't need to be nervous about some of the some of the little variations and very, you know, some of the differences that we find in the text. There's no need to be worried about that. But it, but it is good to know those and embrace those for what they are, all right? And so when you're looking at this account, the resurrection of Jesus shows us. Now, here's the thing. Now, now all the manuscripts, the earliest manuscripts have the record of the resurrection of Christ and that the ladies showed up to the tomb and he was gone. That is a historical fact. Jesus lived. Jesus died. Jesus was buried. And Jesus rose again. We not only have really good evidence in Scripture, we have incredible evidence in history as well. So you need to know that. We do not we do not have what some people would call blind faith in who Jesus is and blind faith. Uh, it, it does not take blind faith to be a Christian. No, we believe and we base our thinking and our understanding on truth. Our faith is based on the truth and evidence of God's Word and the truth of evidence in the person and work of Jesus and the truth and the evidence of the fact of the event known as the resurrection that changed the course of history, changed the people who worshipped Christ. So students, don't get me wrong, but we need to know this. The Word of God said it was so before it was so. The resurrection I'm talking about. The resurrection was just evidence that God is telling the truth. God's word is the truth. So as you're reading, I know this has been a little long today, but I haven't talked to you in a while. As you're reading chapter 16, read all the way through it. Because later on in Acts, we're going to jump over and you're going to see some of those things that the ending of chapter 16 may have been alluded to, may be referring to. Let me pray for you. Father, today as, as students and uh, as we spend time in, your, in the last chapter of Mark, I thank you for the rich, rich heritage and evidence we have in your word and who you are. Thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you that in the original manuscripts, in the original writings, you spoke Holy Spirit through these writers knowing that it was a message and life transforming for them and also knowing father that it was life transforming for us we love you and we thank you and we can't wait to get back together and study your word again in jesus name and all god's people said amen students i love you i will see you wednesday i will actually be there wednesday i want to thank our leaders for uh doing what they do so well and that's ministering as well so hang in there talk to you soon